should we gone to the PCLI and all the testing and why that is awesome. Wayne McDaniel is a developer advocate at Panico. He has had the privilege of presenting at dozens of community events from Paris to Iceland and from MIT to Stanford. He is a fan of karaoke and crochet. Today he is sharing his content deployment pipeline that lets him write in Markdown and automatically test as he publishes to his WordPress blog and the lessons from learned along the way. We hope that he encourages you to dig into some of these technologies and leverage them in your own work. Please find his slides online at mcwayne.com and follow along. Now clap your hands together and help us welcome the way. Text file on my desktop. 
And if you're a normal person or have never seen this before, you're probably thinking, what the heck just happened? I came in here to talk about moving content around and you got to show a weird video. And you did. This is what you just saw. You just saw me take content that I wrote locally. Didn't matter the text editor. Pump in a little bit of data around it and push to a development environment. Then test that behavior of the content when it got loaded into the development environment to see if it broke. How many people have ever published something and realized that Twitter didn't unfurl because you did it slightly wrong? Yeah. yeah. Or that your YouTube video did not work at all. Um, yeah, these things happen all the time. So then if that all works, then I push it to my staging environment or my test environment in this case. And then I test it again to see pixel to pixel. Is it the same site on depth? Did anything break upon transport? Is my config the same between these environments? And if it is, well, I trust it. That means it's probably going to work when I push it to another environment. And then I'll show it chip prod, and prod is where, well, it actually looks. That's where you can go to see that actual post on ncboing.com. Why on earth did I do this? Matt Cromwell, the person who actually named this talk, by the way, from Give, he's not here this weekend, no, she was. But uh, he said I'm like 0.02% of users. And I don't think he's wrong. Why would I build something like this? Ultimately, because I'm kind of lazy. Uh, I know that sounds very counterintuitive. But I write a blog, mcboy.com. I write about my travels. If you want to see where I do at all the WordCamps I go to, I'm doing 30 events this year. Uh, so I'm a blog. And maintaining a blog requires you to do a bunch of little things. A lot. None of them are fatal. None of them are undoable. None of them are unsurmountable. But it's like a death battle of paper cuts. Like, who really likes going in and selecting H1s or H2s? Um, yeah. And then, like, maintaining that stuff over time. Well, for maintaining my website, I automated a bunch of stuff already. So I said, why don't I just apply that whole thing to my website? And then this Gutenberg thing happened. There's a lot of pluses to this. And then I want to talk about some of those pluses. But there's a one minus that I wanted to sidestep, and I'll come back to that a little bit later. So I had a set of goals. As fundamentally a lazy person who doesn't want to spend all my time building posts and like manually testing things and, and doing things. So I said, okay, what, what do I actually care about? What do I actually honestly care about? First, I want to be able to write wherever I want to write. I want airplanes a lot. This is 27, 28th round trip of the airplane. So I'm on a lot of planes. Um, Google Docs does not work on airplanes. Offline mode, off mode kind of does, but uh, Evernote, uh, Sublime Text, Text Wrangler, which I actually use uh, a lot. In fact, this is the blog post I'm writing right now about the event we're at at the moment. It just works. I personally think the admin is really slow. And if I can avoid logging into WP Admin, I do. For most things, this is beautiful. For most things, you can do things like uh, this, this, this little alias I wrote that does a couple commands against a, uh, a series of websites that I maintain. That shows me, oh, here, okay, I'm, I'm up to date on this website, and there's my themes that's up to date, I don't have any junk in there. And you can make that a lot faster. Um, just a lot faster. But moving data around, moving content around, which is an exceptionally cool thing that WPCLI can actually do, gets pretty complex. Um, and if you just manually are doing this, you're actually doing way more work than just logging in to WP Admin and just doing it there. Or so I found out. When I first found out that WPCLI could ship content around, I started playing with it. And yes, this is actually how I made this real post. You can go copy paste this. It won't work for you because you don't have the same GitHub, but actually it probably would work for you if you want access to the site that you're going to have. So that led me to believe that if I'm going to do all this stuff, I should prototype it. I should make something out of it. I should build a tool that I can further extend as I'm going further with my use case. And I can reuse over and over and over again. So instead of handwriting something that looks this crazy, I can just tell it what the kernel link is and feed it some alt text. I mean, all, and all the tabs. 
I learned to make less mistakes. The bane of my existence is posting something and then realizing a day later that it's been wrong since I posted it. And there's just some things that break when you do them wrong, like Twitter and YouTube, the biggest ones. And I don't want to be the guy that's hovering over my machine just looking for every possible error. Now, I have a single blog site, but I'm looking at one post at a time. I can't imagine looking at every single post if I was like working with a lot of people. So that's in the back of my mind as well. So these are my basic goals. I want to write the text editor of my choosing. Google is a fine content editor. I don't think it's a great text editor. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. I never want to log in my WP admin ever again. That means I can automate things because I can start doing things through the command line. I want to make some tools I can use, extend and share, and make less mistakes. So what I ended up building was this. And don't worry, this looks like a giant pile of Legos. I'll, I'll, we're going to go through it and make this make a lot more sense. And what I discovered in the process is that, yes, it is a giant pile of Legos, but Legos you can build anything out of. And WordPress, is this amazingly powerful tool that helps in this giant pile of Legos do amazing things, but it's one technology among hundreds of technologies that you could be applying to your daily lives to make your lives better. It's a central piece for what, what, what is WordPress at its very core? A CNS, a content management system. In the title, it tells you what it literally is. It's not designed initially conceptually to be anything besides the CMS. We've extended it to do those things. But as we're seeing a couple front ends take hold, and with Gutenberg, honestly, with a couple editing product experience, that WordPress's role in all of this becomes, well, super critical to what we're building next. And I firmly believe this. This is why we're going to be such a large part of the web. It's not because we're going to have more websites. It's because we're going to have more rich interactive web experiences through things that we can't imagine right now. The next two years, it's how fast technology changes is going to probably come up with new experiences. There's VR out there right now that's fun in games, but who knows what that's next. And WordPress can serve a very critical role in that if we embrace it as part of the gears, as part of the systems. That's not one thing. You spend all your time worrying about just WordPress, you're missing the bigger picture. And that's what this experience really taught me. So let's talk about how I do it. And I don't mean for you to walk out of this room and go grab the tool that I built and go run with that as the way you do everything. But hopefully you'll see, well, I didn't know that existed. Or, wow, that's how you should do it. And my opinions are my opinions. One of the things I firmly believe in, and Bridget actually mentioned it earlier in her talk, is I believe in Markdown. Markdown is super hyper transportable. It works everywhere. Reddit uses Markdown. GitHub uses Markdown. Uh, Diaspora, like a laundry list of other websites, basically want you to write Markdown because it's super transportable and it's way faster. So I can write things in the left that turn out like they are on the right. If I want one, an H1, it's one hashtag. If I want two, an H2, it's two hashtags. If I want to make a link, it's it's open, close, square bracket, followed by parentheses, and that's the text that I'm linking. It's that simple, it's that quick. So this blog post that I'm writing right now, as I'm at the event, like that's the link to where that talk lives on, on the site, and there is the <coughs> Twitter handle of the person who gave the talk. I'm very formulaic with this stuff. A lot of Twitter links. Oh, I got ahead of myself on talking about that. Go so definitely read the Wikipedia. And then there's this magical thing called Gutenberg. Gutenberg can do things, you just get some raw URLs, and it knows what that raw URL is, it will just turn it into a block. That's pretty magical. Like, if I just fed a, a line into uh, most text editors, it's going to sit there as a line of text. But if I feed that same URL to Gutenberg, it's like, oh, I don't have to do with this. You want a Twitter block, because this is a Twitter link. Great, we're all good. And these two things work together very beautifully because as Matt Mullenweg said from stage of WordCamp Europe, his favorite part about uh, all of Gutenberg is the fact you can copy paste into it and it will take whatever you're pasting as how it's supposed to be pasted. Meaning you can post in Markdown, even mention Markdown by name. Mark, 
post and markdown, it just transforms upon rate. Plus that other cool ability of links just transform, and I'm not worried about how to build a block. I'm worried about giving a naked URL to the tweet that I want to expose. I copy paste it manually. And again, I'm trying to avoid logging in and using an editor that I have to copy paste it into. Because I want machines to do the work for me. Because again, fundamentally I'm lazy here. I know this doesn't sound like I am, but I swear that's why I do this. <laughs> that means I can create my content anywhere in the world and move it to any other place in the world. I am personally in love with WPCLI. It is an amazing tool. It really is. You can do so much with it, and it's so powerful. You can script with it, and I'll get into all that. But uh, one of the things you can do that I'm not on other CMS, CL, command line for a CMS I know of, other than WPCLI, can do this. Let you actually create and manipulate content directly. That's an extremely powerful feature. Which means I can create content, put it somewhere, and then have the CMS itself correctly build it into another environment. Which means I never accidentally blow up a database ever again. Because a tool that was meant to do the job did the job in the way that it was meant to be done by the WordPress way. I didn't accidentally touch a database I wasn't supposed to. I didn't accidentally wipe out a table. I didn't drop all my users because I did something dumb with SQL. Because I'm really bad at writing SQL. Now, I use WPCLI on my server of choice, and my server of choice just happened to be Pantheon because well, I worked there. Not going to lie. Turns out that it actually solved a whole set of problems. When I originally was doing all this, I was trying to go down a route with uh, the REST API. And it turns out that the problem with using the REST API to do content manipulation around the world is authentication, which makes sense. You need to authenticate to be able to do a thing. It's not quite in the REST API how to authenticate properly yet. You can build your own OAuth routes, but that's not what I wanted to do. Terminus let me sidestep that since I was authenticating to my, server, to my host. I could just piggyback on that authentication to do all the stuff from the database and from uh, the install that I wanted to using the command line. And we're not quite there with Gutenberg as far as this idea of transform upon rate. So if I copy paste and go through the editing experience, copy paste, it knows what to do. It's like, all right, I know what to do with this. You copy paste it in me, I'm good. But if you just tell Gutenberg, here's data, shove it in through the API, it's like, well, I guess you wanted me to display it directly as it was shown. What will happen soon, and something that Jetpack and WP Markdown already solved, you can go in in your editing function and just click the button. And if you got Jetpack or just install this and you want the lightweight version of, of all this, um, it will do something called transform upon rate. Which means you shove in data, and it's like, oh, I know what to do with this. You're shoving in data that you want me to transform. And it's a special like, hook in there that it, it, it runs. Um, that all means that this, which is pretty much the text file that I showed in that video, becomes this when I push. So that's just plain text that I store on GitHub that I get everything Markdown can give me, which is everything HTML can give me, because Markdown is just ultimately a shortcut to HTML. Who likes writing uh, tags, like hand, manually writing tags? Yeah, you know what, I kind of do too, um, but it's slow. It's way slow. Uh, like writing, and then forgetting to close a tag, uh, I don't want my IDE yelling at me any more than it needs to. But that seems really error prone, doesn't it? Like there's a lot of moving pieces now. Like I'm writing over here, and I'm pushing over here, and I hope it works, right? And I'm not going into the visual experience, so I can't see the WYSIWYG side of it. I'm losing that. Well, that's where BHAT comes in. BHAT is a behavioral testing framework. Has anybody here used or heard of BHAT before? Awesome. BHAT's actually really simple. It's written for the business user. It says, let me write a test in plain English. And let me write, run that test in plain English. And give me the results back in plain English. There's an extension for it called WordHat that lets it work with WordPress like that, that you don't have to write almost a drop of PHP. Actually, in a perfect scenario, in my test, I don't write PHP. I'm just filling in blanks, pulling off a list, off of recipes, combining the ingredients in the order I want them, and that's how I write tests. And this is, what it, this is actually what a VHAT test looks like. This is the actual feature, which is what a test inside of VHAT is called. It's called a feature. And there's a scenario at the bottom. 
So I is a special word that say me as a user. Scenario, I'm searching for ugly Twitter links. Given that I am on the homepage and I file a bookmark, which is a uh, an ID for one specific section of my website, I follow that with some latest post. I should not ever see slash dash twitter.com because that means I didn't unfurl the tweet. This is all the more complicated writing DCAT test actually is. Like, I am a person, given this information, when I do this, this should happen. In this world, this happens, I should see this. Pretty fast to write this stuff. So I'm slowly, over time, adding more and more and more features to my repository as I build, as I see new Because It means that I can not just test what I originally thought I was going to test, but over time improve based on the errors I've seen, and eventually test for everything that could go wrong on my site, slowly over time. Then there's backstop, the other half of my testing suite side. So behavioral testing is awesome for testing to see the unfurl and whatnot. Backstop says, pixel to pixel, are these two things the same thing? Doing this by hand really sucks. Because we're error prone. Human beings' eyes get tired. And this works really well on large sites too. Like if you have 30 pages and you update something, are you going to really go check all 30 pages? No. Probably not. But what if the CSS gets a little screwy and now you are got this block that looks really funky that you just never bothered to check? This tool can tell you really fast, hey, this isn't the same thing anymore. And show you purple where it's at. And it solves this problem. It worked here, but it doesn't work over there. How many people have ever pushed something from local to a server and it screws everything up? Yeah, that's how local development environments work. Uh, <laughs> they, there, there are ways you can improve that, but that's that's the nature of the beast. So that's why I rely on a development server in this, because my dev server is the exact same environment as my staging server. It's the exact same environment as my live environment. Because these things happen. And this last one is the one that concerns me the most, and where I hope everyone walks out of the room thinking about Gutenberg with this in mind. The whole point of where we've gotten to up till now in the CMS world is separating the concern of configuration from content itself. We shouldn't have to worry that my configuration is going to blow up because I changed a bit of content. Gutenberg, for all the pluses and minuses of it, has reintroduced the concept of marrying together configuration-specific content and letting you put configuration-specific content inside of configuration-specific content. It's called the nested block. Does anyone use this yet? It's an extremely powerful tool. You can build columns like that that do various cool things, literally dragging and dropping. You better hope the configuration doesn't mess up with that. That's where the testing comes in and why this is important. If it works here and it works here, I know it's going to work over here. But if it worked here, for some reason when I shifted over, the configuration screwed up. Uh oh. What do I got to fix? I'm doing this all before it gets to my life cycle. And then ultimately, what I discovered, what this talk really honestly is, but Matt said, Matt Carmel actually said that was a bad name for a talk. Um, this is a giant little song of the batch. <laughs> Who here uses, uses the command line on their machine? Yes, you already know what I'm talking about. For the other people, open up your terminals. Go, go get git bash, uh, or install git on your machine and open up git bash, the bash, uh, the born again shell. It's super, super, super powerful. Let's do things like this, like without a lot of work. Uh, uh, let's me uh, do things like this is all alias, but uh, I'm just gonna look at SFO. What's the weather like back home? That's 61 degrees. Uh, a lot of smoke. We're on fire right now. Well, the city isn't, but the rest of the state is. Uh, and let's me do things where I can make scripts and write really complex ideas. Without a lot of work, without a lot of, once I process the process of thought, you can write new scripts that do fun things in matters of minutes. How many people have found themselves clicking the same buttons in the same order multiple times to fix a problem? Everybody, every hand should go up, because that's how you fix problems. Like you like, I do this, and I do this, and I do this, and I do this, and I do this. And it takes you five minutes, and you do it 100 times a month. Turns out, with WPCLI, 
you can write a script and run the script and have another machine run that script at certain intervals called a cron job. And now you never run and never have to push those buttons again. You do a little work up front and it just does it all for you. Makes the robots do the work. Robots are really, really good at doing super complex things. I can't make this dinosaur. I can buy a maker bot and have it make it for me, or a printer bot and make it for me, and it can make the same dinosaur a billion times. It never gets tired. It'll run out of battery, actually. But that was my, was part of my goal. Like, I don't want to have to do all those little things. I don't want to have to go in and smash the draft button. I don't want to go in and have to manually look and make sure it'll throw when I hit publish. I don't want to make sure, I don't want to have to make sure that so much of this stuff happens by going in and manually looking at it. I think my time's more valuable than that. I just wanted to write my content where I wanted to write it, shove it somewhere, let somebody else test it for me, shove it somewhere else, let somebody else test it for me, and then leave it to me, the human being, to make a decision if I push that production yet or not. Those are my goals. That's exactly what I set out to do. Flat out, that's what I did. I've also open sourced this. With all good projects, you should share your knowledge. And this isn't meant, again, you can use this verbatim. I'm not going to stop you, but you can go get posted now, right now. It's in the slides of, uh, in the slides section of my, my website. I also open sourced all the other components I built, because what I found from doing this was not just that I wrote one utility, but it, at a certain point, like, wait a minute, I'm going to do the same thing again and again, instead of just writing a function that does this, why don't I just extrapolate that into its own tool that I can use with regards to other projects. So if you're using Pantheon, there's a Terminus WP clone content thing I released, uh, Terminus is our command line interface at Pantheon, uh, where I can simply move content from point A to point B. From this site to that site, or this environment to that environment. Very simply, one line, I type in, and bam, it moves it all for me, including the metadata, including the pictures, including the code, uh, like every, everything. It's like verbatim. It does not touch the database. Indirectly, it does, because we're building the new information in it. Which means I can be on an e commerce site, be taking 100 orders a minute, and still build new posts in the same way. But ultimately, Again, first I just logged in, then I wrote to live. <laughs> but things broke on my production site all the time. And unless somebody told me, it's just like to stay that way. But if I came in, wait a minute, it's gotta be a better way. That's why I use CLIs. Post all my blog content to my site. And I now test along the way, because I'm sure I'm gonna make mistakes. I'll ever see CLIs. I see a lie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Dwayne. A little bit shorter to talk, but I'm Dwayne. I work at Pantheon. Text on a file and seeing did it happen or not. 
Um, I can also behave as an admin. So when I look at this page and fill in this form, this should happen. This should be displayed. I, I should be taken to this page. Uh, you can write this for any scenario you can dream up, which means you can write super big suites of tests that will happen literally every time you push code. Uh, Andrew Taylor gave a talk this morning about this particular subject of automating your testing. Um, says it really, really succinctly. As a developer, I want to spend my time solving uh, important problems and responding to alerts from my automation systems of what I need to fix to make sure I don't have to go in and fix those things. That's, that's a paraphrase, but that's basically it. Like, I, I would rather go solve new fun problems and build fun things. Like, like the, the tool I built for, uh, for this list, list, list. Uh, so, oh, yeah, should I already open it? Yeah, this is, this is my list, list, list tool. It, it gives me a, my plugin list, theme list against the list of sites. Uh, I open source, this is a gist of fun. I tweeted about it a couple days ago. Uh, but I would rather be building stuff like this to make my life even easier, even better, and more scalable. Than going in like testing to see when I click the button, did a thing happen? Or worse yet, paying someone to do it. That's the old way. Let them have better jobs. Let them do better. Uh, that's what Buckminster Fuller once said. Uh, at some point, we will replace all of work for humanity through automation. When that happens, we'll get back to doing whatever it was we were doing before they told us to get, go to work. <laughs> Other questions? All right. Okay, your problem solved around work. We're all solving problems. Okay. We're all creating. Oh, hold on. You have your microphone. Hi. So, as a developer, why do you feel that uh, crochet is your kind of outlet? Do you feel like that's a more tangible mm -hmm. product of your time? Like, can you talk a little bit about how you um, have other habits that aren't marketable? For downtime. Well, thanks for insulting me. Because, no, I'm not. <laughs> okay, because, no, because the point is you're saving a crap load of time, so now you have time to be doing something else that makes you feel satisfied. So I thought maybe you could address that yeah. as, as a semi mental health issue, because that's what I was talking about. Okay, okay, that, that, I'm sorry to take offense. It's not a remarkable skill. In fact, if the internet just goes away, crochet will still be a remarkable skill. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, that's a good point. Um, so, yeah, I crochet a lot. Uh, because, well, I don't have to worry about how my websites are maintained, because robots do that for me. Um, I mean, why I crochet specifically? Uh, it's fun. Uh, small repetitive motions are really good for the brain. They're really good for the brain. And as known as a form of Zen therapy. Uh, I don't like meditating. Uh, I can't get past the point that I'm just sitting there. But at the end of crocheting, I have something I make. So that's, that's a personal thing. But um, yeah, I have that free time to do because I'm not spending two or three hours a week chasing bugs on stuff that I'm like breaking by hand. I'm letting robots break it and go fix what they broke and you know, move on about my life. So the more you automate, the more free time you get. Yeah. All right, well, I'll hold you. Uh, let's get back to your early scheduled programs and thank you very much.